Welcome to the uh, 2016 seminar series, uh, and our our first presenter. We're very fortunate to have with us uh, Joanne Garcia Roman, who is a postdoc at the Minnesota Population Center. Uh, he received his PhD from the Autonomous University of Barcelona in 2012, and joined the Pop Center in 2013, and. Uh, we wish we could keep him forever, uh, 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 but unfortunately, he's going to be leaving us in what, about six months or something? Yeah, probably. About six months. But um, uh, unless he changes his mind and decides to, uh, to uh, naturalize, uh, you know, I don't know, stay here. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, uh, uh, he's been uh, extraordinarily productive. Uh, in a very brief uh, period since uh, receiving his PhD, he's published uh, uh, seems like a couple of dozen articles, including multiple articles in all the top journals of demography, uh, and uh, uh, is off to a spectacular uh, career. And uh, uh, he has been collaborating uh, with various people at the Minnesota Population Center and of course maintains his uh, collaborations uh, at the, uh, uh, in Barcelona with Albert Esteve and, and others who have close connections to NPC as well. So anyway, uh, today he's going to uh, tell us about gender inequality in the life cycle, the effect of parenthood um, on the division of unpaid work. So, take it away. Oh, wait Thank you, Steve. And I hereby present to oh. you the coveted Thank you. MPC Seven Air Series mug that Thank you can you. only get by doing this. Thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, I'm going to present the research that is a collaborative uh, research with uh, Mark Ajenko, that is a researcher in the, uh, was my PhD supervisor, and is a researcher in the Central Studies Demographics in Barcelona, too. Uh, I'm going to present this, and also I'm going to use uh, other previous research to contextualize and to show why we decided to, to do this, this research. So uh, a brief outline of the presentation, I'm going to show the objective and motivation, uh, some theoretical background and hypothesis about the, uh, the location, the gender gap in the life course, uh, about the effect the effect of the parenthood in the gender gap, and also about the Spanish context, uh, the data methodology, the results, and the conclusions. So the objective of this research was to study younger generations are more egalitarian uh, because their behavior is more egalitarian, or because uh, they are in a, uh, in a state of the life cycle that uh, is easier to be more egalitarian, especially because they don't have children. Uh, we are going to use uh, time use data from Spain to study the gender gap in time spent in unpaid work. And as unpaid work, we are going to consider domestic work, housework, plus uh, care activities for children and other adults. And in this research, we focus in, on the effect of parenthood as a trigger for gender inequality in the allocation of time between men and women. To contextualize the, the, the research and to, to see why we decided to, to, to do that, so from the Spanish Time Use Survey, 2002-2003, we compute the, the gender gap in one research, the gender gap in unpaid work uh, for couples, it's only for couples, and we saw that uh, younger couples, the gender gap is much slower. So the gender gap for, for younger couples, oops, sorry, will be this. And we know that couples, the medium age, 35, 49, is 50 minutes more than the younger. And for the older couple, is one hour, 23 minutes more. But when we control by other variables, we saw that the, this difference is much smaller. And for example, the difference uh, for the couples 
35, 49, it's only 20 minutes more. So the difference reduces considerably. And one of the reasons of the reduction is because uh, the big difference that we observe in the one factor um, regressions is not because of the age, it's because of the life cycle, the type of household. And we see that couples with children, the gender gap is much bigger. Couples with one child, the gender gap increases in one hour and five minutes. So, some theoretical background about the gender gap in allocation of time. We know that the gender gap is not constant and changes during the, the life cycle. We know that at very young ages, girls and boys do very little domestic work in general, but the difference starts start to, to appear. In general, girls do a little bit more than, than boys in domestic work. In the youth, the difference increases. Girls do a little bit more, the boys don't do too much. And when they leave the parental home as a single, there is a tendency of a reduction in inequalities. Why? Because the girls do the same work they do when they are in the parental home, and boys have to do something else. So the gender gap reduces. With the entry into union, the gender gap in unpaid work increases. It depends on the characteristics of the couples. This increase is bigger or smaller. Couples uh, where the women have has more education, uh, the difference, the gender gap is smaller. Cohabiting couples, the gap is also smaller and other characteristics. And also dual learner couples, the, the gender gap is also smaller. But is the parenthood the, the moment of the life, of life that has a dramatic change on the allocation of time between women and women? And it supposes a traditionalization and, reform, and reinforce, reinforcement of gender roles. So with the arrival of a new child, there is an increase in the, in the total amount of unpaid work that is done in the household, first because there is a new unit and in the household, so the new baby, and there are the activities to take care of the new child. And this increase in unpaid work usually falls more on the mother than on the father. In the opposite side, with paid work happens the same, the, the opposite. So there is an increase, well, it's the same, but uh, in general, the, 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 the father used to do more and the mother used to do less. So the, the gender gap increases, but in the opposite uh, sign. There are higher inequalities where children are younger and they there's a tendency to, to a reduction when children uh, grow up. And what happened is, is some authors have talked about the, the parents do parenthood and, and they behave according to what culturally is established for uh, motherhood and fatherhood when a child arrives. So it means that the mothers in general uh, try to, the social norms uh, assume that they will take care of, um, their, main, their main responsibility is to take care of the unpaid work, and the fathers, is, the main responsibility is to take care of the paid work. We have also to take into account the new ideals of parenthood that promotes fathers' greater involvement in raising children, and in general, that uh, promote to spend more time with children. If you want to table the yeah. question, that's fine. And if you just prefer we table Tell me, tell me, no, no, no problem. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if it's possible for you to um, factor in or to what extent people control for um, maternity leave. Um, because um, if, if um, the workforce tends to be like, yeah, you know, fathers and mothers do not get equal amounts of 
paid time off work. You know, if I was on maternity leave, I'd feel like, well, you know, I'm not going to work. I ought to do the vacuuming. Um, any any ability to control for that? We don't have the ability to control that in our research. We don't have the, the variable about the maternity leave, right. but it's it's an important so. In the, in the first years of the life of the child, especially in the first moment, it's, it's, an, it's a factor important. It's an important right. factor. I mean, it might be something if you continue to work in this area where yeah. you might want to look after age one or something yeah. like that. Because yeah. after age one, that's it's not true. happening for that child. Mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. So some notes about the Spanish context. Uh, we know that social institutions now factors can mitigate the effect of the parenthood. The maternity leave is one of these factors. Uh, for example, we know that in the northern countries, in the Scandinavian countries, uh, where the policies uh, to, to balance wolf, uh, work life and, and, and family life are more, uh, more established, and the, and the uh, gender equality is more important for the government, the, 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 this effect of the parenthood is, is smaller. And we have to take into account that in the case of Spain, the, poli the policies in favor of the patriarchy and the traditional family model persisted until the, the 70s, until the middle 70s. We had the dictatorship until 75, and it was something that we had there. And that the male winner model was predominant until the 90s. There has been, of course, some modernization in the society in the last three decades, but uh, it seems that the norms about femininity and masculinity seems more established than other Western countries. And uh, mothers uh, still have this uh, sense that they are the main caregivers. And it seems that this sense is more established in the Spanish culture than in other countries. And uh, according to uh, qualitative studies, when difficulties to balance work and family life uh, happen, uh, the women is, uh, have more predisposition to adapt uh, her preferences to meet childcare needs. With data, this is the evolution of dual learner couples, uh, male breadwinner couples, and the other two types of couples. You, you can see how. Uh, the dual learner couples has increased in the, this from the 90s with a slight decrease in the last year because of the crisis that has affected more uh, women in general, uh, men, men uh, employment than, than women employment. And if we, we go back to 1981, less than a quarter of couples were dual learner couples. So. It has been an evolution that we can see in the type of couples according to the employment status. And about the gender gap in the allocation of time, we have data from two different moments. And we can see that the uh, gender gap in housework has reduced in almost one hour. And the gender gap in pay work has reduced in one hour. But the sign of the two are different. So housework, the women usually do more housework. So the, this, is, this is the women less men. So housework, uh, women usually do more housework. And it's positive. And pay work is negative. But so there has been a reduction in both type of activities. We haven't, so in the, this data doesn't show uh, important differences in care activities, leisure, or personal time. And between the two years of analysis, there has been a lot of uh, uh, there have been changes in the composition of the population. And we will control by, this, by these changes, that it's more dual and couples, uh, higher education in women in the second moment, and other things. Uh, the, the reduction in the gender gap in housework between the two moment is 30 minutes. The reduction in the gender gap in pay work is not significant. And we observe some uh, significant reduction in the gender gap in, in leisure time. So the hypothesis and the research question that we want to answer in our research is if 
is this. Are young couples more egalitarian because there is a generational change or because they are in a life cycle that is more in favor, in favor of gender equality? If the answer is that they are more egalitarian, we expect evolution to a more egalitarian society uh, and faster evolution to a more equality in the future. If the answer is the second, so they are in a life cycle that is more uh, easy to be easier to be more egalitarian. Uh, so we expect higher equality is circumstantial, and the future evolution will be slower. Our data is from the Spanish Tanyu survey. We have two Tanyu surveys, 2002-3 and 2009-10. The data I'm using is from the you can find this data in the uh, National Statistical Institute webpage that is for free. But it, this, this is one of the surveys, one of the countries that we are going to have, I hope, very soon in the multinational TAMU survey. That is one of the projects of the IPUNS News. So as a TAMU survey, uh, it collects social demographic information of all the members of the household. And all the members of the household, in the case of the Spanish survey, all the members of the household, 10 years old and older, has to fill the diary. And the diary is organized uh, in 10 minutes interval, uh, starting at 6 AM. So it's something like this, the diary. So the, it's not like the American time survey that you have to say the activity, when the activity f starts and finish. So the Spanish diary is. Uh, Organizing intervals, you have to say the, uh, what are you doing, you are doing a secondary activity, and other information to contextualize that, uh, the, the, the activity that you are doing, but this part we are not using. So advantages of this survey in relation to the, to the American one, so we have information for all the members of the household. It means that we can compare the time use of the different members of the household. In my research, I use the information of the men and the women of the couple. All I'm all, everything I'm presenting uh, is information about the couple. This is my unit of analysis, couples. It's something that we can't do with the American time use survey because we don't have, only have one member of the household information. And the problem of the Spanish one is that we have uh, two surveys and we don't have, so far, we don't have a, a, a year for the new one. And I guess it's not going to be, I think in the, in the next year, we are not going to have a new one. Because it's, I think it's not a priority. Uh, at least uh, this kind of, with all this information, it's going to be difficult to have a new one. Sample size for the two surveys, for the 2009-10, there were a small, um, well, a pretty big reduction in the household size, but the sample is still pretty big to do good research. So our dependent variable is the difference in time spent in unpaid work between the man and the woman. Well, actually, it's the women and the men because it's the difference. So. If the values that we have are positive, means that the women spend more time. If, and if we're negative, it will mean that the men spend more time. And the, the, uh, the, the data I show are hours per day. The sample selections are uh, heterosexual couples without children or with children under eight years old. Eight years old is the difference. I will show now what we selected this. Yes, so because the difference between the two surveys. And this is what we want to do. So we have in 2002-3, we are going we select individuals born in these four different cohorts. For example, the cohort born in 78-82, they were 20-24 years in 2002-3. And we want to see what happened with this individuals seven years later when they had 27, 31, or the same for the generation more between 68 and 72, that they were 30, 34, and 
in the first survey and they are they were 37 41 in the second survey so from the first survey from, from the first sample we select individuals without children or with one child under eight and we want to compare these individuals with individuals without child that are still childless in the second sample or with one or two children that has born during this period of analysis or couples that have one children born before 2002 so have one children in the first sample and have another children that has born during the during the period of analysis the sample size we have are pretty considerable to have uh, significant results. And the limitation of our study is have to be clear that it's not a longitudinal survey. Uh, but we are comparing uh, individuals with different, with, with similar characteristics in two cross-sectional moments. And we could will control by characteristics like education, uh, the type of union, uh, the employment status, and other characteristics. Uh, our research, we will put together the two surveys, and we will analyze two, in two steps. One is the, the first transition, that is from zero child to the first child, and the second transition, that is from the first to the second child. So uh, in each of the, of the models in the transitions, we will have three models. First, we will present the model with two variables. That is the life cycle in the cohort. And the second model, we will add uh, the variable regarding the employment status and the nationality that add two variables, two characteristics that have changed considerably in the, last, in, in the period of analysis. And in the last model, we will add the educational attainment of the women and the type of union. But the most important variables are the life cycle and the cohort. So for the transition to the first child, we will compare the, the couples with children, children in the first moment with couples that are still childless in the second moment with couples that have had one child and couples that have had two child. And we will control for these three cohorts. In the second transition, our reference category will be couples with zero, zero children in the first moment. In the second transition, we will compare couples with one children in the one child in the first moment with couples that only have this child in the second moment, or couples that had had a second child <coughs> during the period of analysis. And in this case, we will add an all an older generation, an older cohort. And we, we are not going to work with the youngest because very few individuals had one child, of one, very few individuals of this generation had one child in the first moment. So you, we, we are not analyzing this, this cohort. So first results for the transition to the third child the gender gap in the first moment, it means couples with zero children, childless couples in 2002-2003, the gender gap was one hour and a half in 2002 and three. Seven years later, the, the couples who were still, that were still childless, the gender gap was reduced to a little bit more than one hour. But the couples that had had a child in this period, the gender gap, it doubles the initial one. And if they have had two children, the gender gap increases in two hours. This is a transition for the first child. And about the transition to the second child, the results that we have are not different, we can say and not what we expected. Uh, we think that the, the second child, as I will present in the transitions, in the conclusion, sorry, uh, there has been another, so the, 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 the differences are, are produced in the first child, and the second child 
the, the, the changes that we observe that much smaller. Our models for the transition to the, to the first child, we see that uh, for couples that are childless in the second moment of analysis, we observe a reduction, a reduction in the gender gap that approximately 20 minutes, it's minus 0 0.42 hours, it's approximately 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But the change to the couple that has had one child is one hour and a half. So the arrival of a child supposed an increase in the gender gap in one hour and a half. And if the arrival of two children, it supposed an increase of more than two hours. Regarding the court, it's important to see that the court is not significant. So we see that the life cycle is important, but not the court. When we add the variables about the employment status and the nationality, there has been an important changes in the composition by these two variables. We see that the, 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 the difference between the childless couples in the two moments is not significant. We think that the, the, the difference that we observe in the first moment is not due to, the, to, the, uh, to this variable, it's more due to the, to the um, employment status of the couples. And the, the, the dual learner couples are were higher in the first, well, the, the, the unemployment that is very high in Spanish, in Spain, uh, affected more the male employment in the, in the crisis. So we think that it was the reason that the differences that we observe in the first moment are not in the second moment, in the, when we add new variables. And uh, the difference when between the couples with one child is still significant and also different for the couples with two children. And the core is still not significant. When we add the other variables, so the results are consistent and we see that the different, so the increase of a one child, the arrival of a child, suppose an increase in one hour and a half uh, in the gender gap. And the increase from zero to two child, children, it suppose a little bit less than two hours. For the transition to the second child, the first moment it seems that there is an effect in the cohort, but we think that it's, the reason for this effect is more to the, to, uh, we control, well, so we, select, we have selected uh, couples with children under eight, but we think that the, 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 the age is, uh, is not the same Mm, I have to say that uh, even when we control by eight, we, we limit to eight, the, the age, we think that the, the, for the younger generations, the, the children are a little bit younger. It means that we should have control probably, put the limit in another uh, classification to, to three years old probably or something like that. In this case, uh, it seems that there is a, a, a significant effect to the transition from one to zero children, that there is a reduction in the gender gap. And, uh, but this uh, transition disappears when we control by the other variables. Probably here we can see something about the, the maternal leave that you, you say that the, or probably some mothers, when they have a child, they uh, leave temporarily the, 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 the job and they come back. So when we control by, by the employment status, the, this different disappear. The same, so, and also in this case, the cohort is not significant. And in the last moment, in the last model, sorry, the, the results for the life cycle and for the cohort, any of them is, are significant. So what are the conclusions that we get from this research? We see a clear effect of parenthood as a trigger for inequalities 
in the couple. And we quantify an increase of the gender gap in one hour and a half. Uh, regarding the second child, uh, the effect is lower. And we have seen that is not significant. We think that is because the, the second child, mm, there, is a less, there is less additional work in the household. And also we think that the needs, the second child needs new arrange, arrangement in the household. And fathers uh, are more responsible for more duties, duties. And also the couples need to uh, externalize some of the, of the tasks. So we think that it means that the impact of the second child uh, is much lower. About the generations, we have seen that are not significant when we control by the life cycle. So our conclusion is that the younger generations are more egalitarian because they don't have children yet. So if we go back to our initial hypothesis, we think that the, the true, the, 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 the one that we will take is the second one. So, and we conclude that the uh, higher inequality is circumstantial, so the future revolution will be slower. And some ideas for future studies to continue with this research. Uh, what happened in other type of activities? What happened uh, on paid work, in leisure? Also, there are, we haven't seen differences in personal care. What happened? when we control by other things in personal care. Another possible future research is to compare what happened in other countries with different welfare regimes and cultural norms. For example, in the multinational time use survey, we will have data from UK, from Netherlands, from France. So it can be a possibility of analysis. And also, <coughs> it will be interesting to do a similar research using some longitudinal survey. We don't have a longitudinal survey with this information in Spain. I don't know if somebody knows from another country that we can have this information. And this is everything I wanted to explain. Thank you. What is uh, uh, domestic work and care activities? And care, caring, care. caring, yeah. Okay. Um, something you might consider, I, again, I know sometimes like you can be doing domestic work and care simultaneously, like, you know, the kid is in the crib and I'm washing the dishes, but um, you might consider separating out the two or looking at so care is also child care, right? Yeah, child care and adult care, but the most important part is child care. Right. What happened in this case is uh, this is, so we sent this, this paper for reviewing to a journal, and this is one of the things that they told us. But what happened is that the uh, couples with, without children, they don't spend time in care activities in general. So the time that they spend in care. So we want to take into account this part too. It's true that the total amount of uh, unpaid work is different because uh, couples without children, they don't have, they don't spend time in care activities. I guess it's, so. you know, it's not saying that what you've done isn't valid. It's just sort of, I feel like I have a follow-up question of like, so as the gap gets bigger, is it, explained by just child care or is it you know yeah, it's true. doing child care I'm also cooking more and vacuuming more and whatever if it's just you know is it is it specifically you know around children or is it all the other stuff or you know is there some swapping of those they seem like overlapping categories but that's you know if it's just sort of like well if you had a child would you spend more mm -hmm. time caring for kids than men do or is it all of domestic yeah, we, work or the other care stuff gets, or the other unpaid work also has a kind of ripple effect from the child care. Yeah, we can do, well, when I suggest this thing that study for other activities, 
one possibility is then also to do separately domestic work and care activities. What happened in domestic work, in house work? Yeah, it just be a little bit more insight into what's happening. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. right now. You mean you mean that we can do something in a state of the total work they share, no? Probably it can be one possibility. Exactly. So, like, if if women are doing sixty percent of all of the IT labor, but then once they have a kid, now women are only doing fifty percent, you can still actually see. Yeah, it's true. Because the total pie has gotten bigger. Yeah, it's one. About what? The, yeah, I think we are going to find different results, but it can be yeah what happened because we are not controlling if there is an increase in the in the total amount of time. Right. So. I mean, if you're going from no kids to two kids, that is a huge yeah. <laughs> no, we know we know that we know that there is an increase in the total time. Yeah. And this and this total time this this increase it's. Uh, it goes more to the to the to the woman in general. Yeah. Is one of the things. Yeah. So, would you say the decline in inequality is simply a function of the decline in fertility? The decline in inequality, uh, well, period change. In yeah, I think the decline in fertility, yeah, probably something that is there. So, in Spain, we had one of the uh, lowest fertility rates in the, in the world, we can say. I think it was at the, at the end of the 90s, it was one point, less than 1.2. So there is one factor that can go. Uh, yeah, it can be one, the fact, but, but at the end, the, the, the couples will have at least one child. So with, when they have this child, the inequalities will appear again, will appear. And, but I think the overall inequality in society, you know, in terms of your initial measure, not controlling for life cycle, right? Uh, you know, uh, it looks like inequality went down a lot. And if effectively you just control for fertility, does that go away? Well, I think there is also a change in the society. There is also a change that, you know, we are getting a little bit more, more egalitarian, but the, the, the part is, is slower than, than it seems when you, analyze, when you analyze only by age. But yeah, the fertility, I don't know this thing about the fertility. I think it's, it's important, but uh, so at the end, the, the, the inequalities uh, appear. Yeah. Um. Yeah, um, I almost asked um, early on, but I kept interrupting you anyway, so I didn't, um, uh, what the Spanish TFR was in those periods, what the total fertility rate was. And I think it would be helpful um, in presenting this if we had a little bit of context of like, what is the total fertility rate? Uh, what proportion of um, women you know, are, are childless or have one child or have two children. So I didn't have a good sense of like, so nearly everybody's going to move into the one child or there's a big segment of the population that, yeah. you know, will not have any children or hardly anybody has two children or whatever. So just again, framing. Well, the total fertility rate is, is very low. It was very, very low. I think it was the lowest l lowest low that they call in this in this paper. It is it was less than one point two. There were recovered in the beginning of the century. It was uh, I think now is more or less one point four. Uh, there were a big contribution of the uh, immigrants to this recovery of the of the of the total fertility rate. And what is very important is the the delay in the age of childbirth. It's more than 30. The first uh, child is, for women, more than 30. That is really, really, really 
late, I think. 32, I think. We have in the other paper we have to compare, that we compare uh, uh, Spain, US, and France. We have this, I don't remember now exactly. But I think that the, the, the third child, the age at first child is 32, I think. I'm not sure now. And uh, I know from other researchers, from the Center of the Studies of Demographics, that they have analyzed the proportion of uh, childless women. And uh, I should check better this, this conclusion, but I think they um, have a forecast that 20% or 25% of the, of the uh, women born in the, in the 70s will be childless. It's a very big proportion of women who are not going to have a child. In this case, the, so the inequalities will, will, will not appear, no? It's 25% and it's, it's very big. I'm curious, is it true whether the people are employed or not? I mean, I, I've been sitting here trying to figure out what the effect of a trade-off of child care is for other duties, but I couldn't tell whether you were you had only people who were employed in no. employment or not, or is there a difference between those in which the home is not? I have uh, couples, so the couples can be dual earner couples when both are employed. Yeah. I have couples who only work, only the man is yeah. working. Couples who, that only the the woman is working, and couples where both members are unemployed. And those were related to your models. Yeah, they were in the second model. I put this. Uh, the second model, we introduced the variable employment status. And what happened between the two periods is that, the, as I say, the, said, the, the, the employment, the unemployment that is very high in Spain, the unemployment during the crisis uh, affected more the male employment because the construction and services were more, especially the construction. So. We know that in dual under couples where both members are employed, the, the, the gender gap is, is smaller. I'm not presenting in the model here, the, the, but we, we have in the models, but I'm not presenting the coefficients. It's I was actually thinking about the, the effect of the, the crisis there. And um, when, your, when your argument is that Inequality is circumstantial there. It's not about norms, but it's more about if you have a child or, or not. Um, it could be interesting to look at the effect of, of the crisis almost in, in terms of a natural experiment to say when somebody in the couple is, un, you know, is going from employed to unemployed as an effect of the crisis, how does that ch change the, the time use or the time spent? On caregiving, yeah. so say if the guy is unemployed, what would you expect in terms of the equality of the yeah spend? yeah the problem to do that in this case we need we need longitudinal data yeah I think we know that the limitation of our study is it's not longitudinal so I'm not the same couples no I think I think it's fine the, the analysis that we have done but not but to do that we actually need the to have the same couple, what happened? Uh, I don't know. For example, if we can do something with uh, trying to to use another other variables, but with uh, with American time survey because we have data about the the employment, but we don't have time use into different moments. You know what? Well, so my question is, I'm wondering if this something un unmeasured that contributes to both having children and having unequal you know, uh, duties, distribution of duties. And I don't know how you would figure out if it's like a cultural value or, or something that leads people to both have children and have unequal work allocations. Um, I thought one possibility would be maybe looking at people who have a high propensity to have children but don't have children and see what the distribution of, of work is in that household. I don't know. Two days, one. So you you mean that the difference to the, 
that there's something, some cultural value that causes yeah, of to have children and to have unequal work distribution. Yeah, I think, I think there is something cultural, why this increase with the child. So one of the things that is behind everything is that this uh, cultural value that uh, gives to the woman, to the mother, the, 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 the role of the maker giver. And this is one of the things that I put from the background, that it, from previous studies, it seems that this, this, uh, this thing is more established in the Spanish culture. And there is this thing, there is also the policies. Other, there are papers, similar papers, uh, about the, the Scandinavian countries and the effect of the parenthood, or the, it's, it's a smaller, so it's a bit. Regarding what you said about the uh, unemployment effect, I think you have something. Um, Rachel has something. I don't know if it's something. Oh, yeah, I have, I, I'm trying to remember exactly what your question was about the effect of unemployment on time. I didn't actually look at housework. But um, I know that other folks have, and I think that uh, there is some evidence to show that men do spend more time in housework when they lose their job, but not as much as to make up the difference. So, but I, that wasn't my work, and I think mm -hmm. it was not on this most recent recession. It was on an earlier period. That's related to the uh, previous comment. Uh, if you had longitudinal data, you know, great value would be to see. Uh, Couples who would have children later already had a, an equal, more unequal division of labor. You know, at a previous point in time, because as fertility becomes lower and more discretionary, the fertility becomes more of an expression of your traditional attitude. Mm -hmm. So it could be that those who are you know, pre their first birth, who uh, you know, would be more traditional than those who would. Not yeah, this is true. Uh, this this one. One of the concerns that we have in the for the first transition is that the the young generation that we have that were they were 20, 24 years old in in the first moment, so they have some characteristics, you no, know, some specific characteristics, and if they have child when they are very young, there is something behind this. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering if those, since fertility is low, um, and to get to two, you have already had to have had one earlier on, you know, had to have started having children earlier maybe than average. Um, I'm just wondering if those, the two people with the transition to two children, if they look differently than the people that end up staying at only one child. I don't know if it's possible to even know that, um, but I mean, investigating just the two parent, the two child family, mm -hmm. rather than grouping them with those folks that are have other characteristics? We haven't done that. We have some descriptive results for the sample size, but I can't. Because then you yeah, can probably. argue that those folks are more traditional and maybe more of a greater difference than the folks that have no children. For the, well, we don't have the younger, younger, younger generation, but for the second generation, probably mm -hmm. the level of education when they had two children uh, is it still going on? Is it still moving? So mm -hmm. we know that, the, that if the education of the woman is higher, so the, there is a, so the, there is also a, a more delay in the in the in the arrival of a child. So the characteristics will be a little bit different. So, I mean, since since you don't have, and I know you would love to have longitudinal data, um, one of the ways to a little bit address the selection issues of those who go on to have children and those who who don't and um, those who go on to have a second child versus those who have one would just be to do whatever digging you can in terms of what are the background characteristics of yeah. them like to what extent do they differ in terms of like you know the women have more education or they're more likely to be in the labor force and then you could at least acknowledge Probably some of this is driven by selection, and here's what we know about how this group differs from that group. Yeah. I mean, again, so, it's not as yeah. good as longitudinal. Yeah, yeah. You got. Yeah. Is there is there religious data at all in the ten years? Religion? Like, yeah, like time spent uh, doing. Yeah, well, we have. To, 
we had the activity. You can, yeah, we, just, so we can check. I mean, it would be less likely to, to get people, but um, you could include that. Yeah, it can be one, one input variable to check the religiosity, but I don't know why well, it's possible. We can also do some region, uh, territorial differences, but it haven't done. Okay. okay, well, I guess uh, thank we're you. out of questions. So thank you very much. Thank you.